Hi, welcome to this playthrough of The Last Express. This is actually probably one of the highest concept adventure games of all time. Uh, only slightly behind something like Grim Fandango, I would say. It's also one of the best adventure games, uh, coming in sort of uh, just after the height of that genre's popularity. Um, let's see, is this... Adventure Gamers, top adventure games of all time. What we got here? Right? Grim Fandango, yeah, that's a good one. The Longest Journey, you know, Beast Within, or Broken Sword, yeah, it's not bad. Wait, Riven? Really? That stupid puzzle at the beginning that ruined the game if you touched it? Yeah, what, Day of the Tentacle? Ah, yeah, here it is. And the game sort of dumps us onto this screen with no particular indicator of what we're supposed to do. You know, there's no big button that says, you know, click here to start the game. And this isn't that kind of thing. Uh, what we do see in the background is a map of the old Orient Express, uh, which in this iteration, I don't know if it always ran the same course, but in this iteration, it started out in Paris, it runs through Germany, and what was then the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and then through down through the Balkans, and finally into uh, the Ottoman Empire, Constantinople on the, the, the edge of Europe and Asia. And we see this ornate egg, uh, beautiful really, uh, but a complete puzzle to us. And look at this strange crest that's uh, here in the center. But if we hover, here, the game says that this is the way ahead. So let's check out the introduction. Mesdames et messieurs, votre attention s'il vous plaît. L'Orient Express à destination de Strasbourg, Munich, Vienne, Budapest, Belgrade, Sofia et Constantinople va partir. Les passagers sont priés de monter à bord des voitures. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. The Orient Express is now leaving for Strasbourg, Munich, Vienna, Budapest, Belgrade, Sofia et Constantinople. All passengers should be on board. So there's actually a lot to unpack in that introduction. Um, we're the character that got on the train via a motorcycle. Uh, I suppose the attendants on the train weren't watching for people to try to stow away that way. Um, but before we saw a different character waiting for someone who evidently never showed up. And maybe that's us. So let's check our inventory and we find this telegram here. Cat have come across something exceptional. More your line than mine. Depart Orient Express, 7 p.m., Friday, God or less. You're the only one I can trust. 
your pal, Tyler. P.S. Hope you're not still angry about what happened in Cuba. Okay, so unless we stole someone else's telegram, uh, our name is Kath. Uh, I would guess that that's his last name. And we can safely assume that the man we saw waiting for us was Tyler. Uh, fortunately, we're in the same position as Kath is because neither we nor he knows what Tyler wants us to look at on the train. Uh, we also don't know what happened in Cuba that pissed Kath off. And this is where the game puts the player in, in sort of an unsettling position. So here we are, no knowledge of even who we are or anything. But what seems clear is that we want to find Tyler as soon as possible. So let's go find Tyler. See the time is 7.13 p.m. A rather colorfully dressed woman in the background. Excuse, excuse me, monsieur. can you tell me which compartment is Tyler Whitney's? Oh, Monsieur Whitney, excuse me. Your compartment is number one. Well, it seems that this French man thinks that all white people look the same. Because even though we referred to Tyler in the third person, uh, he thought that we were Tyler. Now, this, com this compartment is the rear sleeping car, and it has eight rooms from rooms one to eight. And Tyler is in room one. So let's go and see what this thing is all about. And you can see the clumsy interface. Uh, you never know whether you're in front of the room you want uh, before you turn right to see uh, whether it is, and usually it's not. All right, here's the room we want. Tyler. Well, Tyler seems fairly deceased as people go, and it seems he's met with a very gruesome end. He has claw marks on his face and hands, and there's quite a bit of blood. Now, we could actually go and tell the conductor that our friend is a corpse, but with some foresight in mind, I'm not going to do that. Instead, we're going to assume Tyler's identity and try to find out who killed Tyler Whitney. And, well, I see one easy way to get rid of the body on a moving car. We can just toss him outside. Surely nobody will see that. And we saw in that scene that Kath's jacket is now bloody, so we're going to need to deal with that. In addition to this puddle of blood, uh, Tyler has left us this crate, which has nothing in it, but which used to store something large and oval, and something small and sort of fish-shaped. Presumably, whoever off Tyler also took these items, and presumably they were the ones that Tyler wanted to show us. So before I do anything else, let's change out of this bloody jacket. And this is the moment we become Tyler for all the world. Uh, I would note that musical cue that we just heard certainly leaves it an open question whether Kath is a good guy or a bad guy. We don't actually know that. If you notice that hand icon underneath the table where the empty crate was, and we see that it's a very colorful and apparently fragrant scarf. We actually caught a glimpse of a quite strikingly dressed woman earlier. Wonder if it belongs to her. If we look inside Tyler's bag, we'll find the return telegram that we sent to him. I accept need to get out of town for a while anyway. Book double compartment in your own name. Don't mention mine. 
Maybe a little late. I'll meet you on the train. Cat. P.S. Still angry about Cuba. And that line reading really makes it sound like Kath is annoyed rather than really pissed off at Tyler. So we might not be inclined to think that Kath came here to kill Tyler or anything like that. And here's this scroll. And it's actually written in a very old version of Russian prior to the modern Cyrillic alphabet uh, that you would see today. And Kath can't read it. So it's interesting to note that if Kath can understand a foreign language in the game, subtitles will appear on the screen to let us know what's being said. But if Kath does not know the language, then we also don't get to know. We sit in Kath's mind, uh, even though we don't have any of his memories and, in fact, uh, do not yet even know what his first name is. Uh, if he can understand a the language, then we get to know what's being said. So we'll need to find out what the scroll says. And that's all there is in that bag of interest. Let's check out this bathroom here. Really nothing to speak of in this bathroom. Uh, there is a cabinet underneath here that they bothered to render. So you might think that that will be important later, but there's nothing there now. I don't see anything else here in Tyler's room. And I don't know how this pool of blood thing is gonna play out, but hey, let's see what else we can see. So just to get our bearings here, let's look at how the train is laid out. So in the rear are two private cars, which we're going to see later on. And next is the rear sleeping car where we're at right now with rooms one to eight. And then beyond that is the forward sleeping car with letters A through H. Next is the smoking car. It's like a lounge. And then the dining car, the restaurant. And beyond that is the baggage car. In front of that is the coal car, which we can't access right now, and then the actual train engine. And that's it. That's the entire train. So all of the action happens in that stretch. So we've just crossed that's over into the other sleeping car, which has rooms A through H. Here comes the conductor, and I'm going to go ahead and follow him. And all of the characters will excuse themselves. Bonsoir, monsieur. Bonsoir. Viens ici. And we see a little child. A rather unruly little child, I expect. Blowing a whistle. Bonsoir, mon nom. Comment vas-tu? Tout va très bien, monsieur. Tout va bien. Est-ce que tu as un Américain au numéro 1 Ah, vous voulez dire, monsieur Whitney Bétissime. Peux-tu lui dire que monsieur Schmidt l'attend au restaurant Il me semble qu'il attend depuis un bon moment. Ah, l'Allemand, le nouveau riche. Prenez Contrôlez votre carrière. Je suis désolé. Mais vous savez, il ne comprend pas un mot de français. À la gare. Ça n'a pas d'importance. Je parle français si j'entendais n'importe quel autre conducteur s'exprimer de cette manière, il serait renvoyé au prochain an. Je suis désolé, mon oncle. Arrête de m'appeler mon oncle. C'est déjà suffisant de savoir que nous sommes parents. Pas besoin que tu me le rappelles sans arrêt. Je suis désolé, mon... euh, monsieur. Pardonnez-moi. Ça ne se reproduira plus. Bon, à part ça, tout va bien Tout va bien. À part le voyageur du 7, il a quatre compartiments remplis de femmes voilées. Et dès que je passe dans le couloir, il me dévisage comme si j'étais prêt à les violer. Tu sais à qui ces femmes appartiennent, non Mahmoud Madka, c'est ce que dit la liste des passagers. Ça, c'est le nom du garde du port. Ils sont très discrets. Ils vont à lui, alors ouais, Je n'y crois pas. Alors fais attention, d'accord Mais mon oncle, vous savez que je suis marié. Par contre, vous... Je t'ai dit, tu as dit de ne pas m'appeler mon oncle. Ça suffit. Well, we just heard that we, or at least Tyler, was supposed to go see Schmidt. Someone named Schmidt. Excuse me, excuse me, are you looking for me? Ah, Monsieur Whitney, excuse me. I do not recognize you. Herr Schmidt is waiting for you in the restaurant car. Okay, so we're supposed to go see Schmidt in the dining car. And also, most of the cars in this sleeping car, we just found out, are made up of a harem. Uh, so this attendant tells us what the conductor told him. But we could have just gone and seen Schmidt even without that second conversation, because Kath can speak French, uh, as denoted by the subtitles. Speaking of which... J'ai vu un homme tirer par la fenêtre, et il roulait à côté des rails. 
Vraiment Oui, il a roulé et il était mort. François, s'il te plaît, va jouer avec ton jouet. Il est mort, il est mort, il est mort. François, arrête de chanter, c'est désagréable. Ne <rire> pleurer, eh bien pleure, ta vie est tellement dure. Je suis une mère horrible qui te fait souffrir. Allez, allez, quel est ce bon chagrin Tu n'es pas si malheureux. Allez, sèche tes yeux. Allez, c'est fini maintenant. Well, if this obnoxious child saw the body, I'm thinking we might have a problem. Francois's mom didn't think much of it, but in hindsight, maybe our strategy wasn't the best. So here we come to the game's sort of main mechanic. Now we can actually reverse time to the point when Kath threw the body out the window. Now eventually, I think, someone is probably going to see a dead body in the middle of the floor. Uh, the bathroom is out because we share that with our neighbor in compartment 2, but there is this fold-out bed. But you have to be careful here. We went back in time, so everything subsequent to that that we did after we threw Tyler out the window has been erased. So we have to change jackets again. We have to... Uh, we have to get the scarf again, and we have to read the documents that are in Tyler's bag. So fortunately, I can just do that very quickly, and we don't have to sit through it all again. Now, oddly enough... The child Francois is no longer in his room, either because the timing changed or it could be that he's actually prompted to come back in the room if he sees the corpse go flying out the window. I, I don't really know. So now I'm going to go back and wait for this conversation to happen again because, again, right now, Kath doesn't know that he's supposed to go meet Herr Schmidt. So here comes the conductor. So now Kath has overheard the Schmidt conversation, so we don't need the attendant to actually tell us about it. We can just go talk to him. And I'm looking for Francois right now. Uh, I don't know where he's gotten to. And you just kind of have to run up and down the hallway because there actually are places that the characters can go that we can't go. Um, I think they're like in between the cars, but if but Kath won't even look over there if you try. He he will only turn around at the ends here. So there's, there there's Francois. Je l'ai trouvé. Il est à bois. We saw that the child has a rather ornate looking gold whistle, and I might note that the shape seems to resemble the smaller indentation in Tyler's box. French is so funny. Madame Caillot seems to become a sort of national heroine. Somehow she's been transformed from an insignificant woman enslaved and overshadowed by her husband into a passionate avenger. Si les petites bourgeoises se mettent à écrire l'histoire, on n'est pas sorti d'affaires. Voilà bien, on nous réflexion de petite reste crête. Arrête. Tu dis toi-même qu'elle est une Madame Bovary. What counts is she's acted. She's the very opposite of Madame Bovary. I'd say more Joan of Arc, really. Who the English burnt at the stake. Must you always bring that up? Well, it happened. What really interests me about Madame Caillot is the way the French scandals develop. So excusez-moi, monsieur. Excusez-moi, monsieur. Pardon me. Like the Dreyfus affair. So these two young women are discussing a current event, which we'll talk more about later. I missed this conversation between Francois and his mother, so let's rewind. And see if we can hear what they're talking about now. Cessez, s'il te plaît, ou je t'abandonne dans la prochaine gare allemande. 
Ça te plairait <rire> There's nothing more annoying in the world than this sound that it makes when you rewind. Excusez-moi, monsieur. Although that conductor excusing himself is close second. D'où vient ce sifflet? Je l'ai trouvé. Où, s'il te plaît? C'est plus ça. Pourquoi le caches-tu? Montre-le-moi. Non, je l'ai trouvé. Il est à moi. Tu es vraiment impossible. Tu peux le garder, mais à condition de ne plus siffler avec. Promis. Okay, we heard him say that he found the whistle. Although it's not clear how that happened. French is so funny. Madame Cayo seems to become a So when we get back to the smoking car, the women are having that conversation just as before, even though it should have happened at the same moment if you look at those two timelines. But um, in fact, uh, the characters don't act totally independent of us. Uh, the, the, these women will leave at some point, and you can miss this conversation, but they will also wait for us to come into the room to start the conversation so that we have a little bit of a better chance of, of overhearing them. It's the way the French scandals develop so differently from English ones, like the Dreyfus affair in England. And usually the conversations don't fade out like that. In the dining car, we see a whole bunch of the principal characters. Here's the waiter getting right up in our Bonsoir, grill. Bonsoir, monsieur. We have a nice table for you here in the corner. If you will please uh, follow me. So I'll go and sit down there. Please, monsieur. But have a seat. Let's chat with Schmidt. Ah, Herr Whitney. You are different than I had imagined. Sorry to keep you waiting. I ran across an old friend. One does have the most unexpected encounters on trains. Shall we get down to business? Have you brought the gold? First you kept me waiting, now you don't answer me. I have kept my half of the bargain. If something has gone wrong, I would like to know it. Nothing has gone wrong. I'm glad. I trust that you will not mind if I asked to see the gold. I trust you won't mind either if I ask to see what I'm buying. To see it? But you know that is impossible. The merchandise will be put on the train at Munich. It is what we agreed. Good. Then we're even. Here, Schmidt, it's been a pleasure. We'll talk again after Munich. So there we see Kath playing this situation to the best of his ability with no information. He doesn't know what Tyler was trying to buy. Bonsoir, monsieur. Does monsieur wish to order dinner? Yes. And he certainly doesn't have any gold to pay Schmidt with. So it's best to just play it cool. Over here we see a dour looking man. Let's see if we can strike up a friendship. Mind if I join you? Very good. Why not? So there appears to be some history there. I didn't mean to scare you off. For me, a bottle of soup is enough. I can't take no pleasure in food while millions of my countrymen go without bread. Good evening. Well, we didn't get his name. But he appears to be a rather pissed off Russian who probably knows the young woman at the corner table. And he seems to have left his Nietzsche behind. Uh, inside we find the train schedule and he has marked a stop that is at 10.40 p.m. tomorrow night, not tonight. Uh, not sure whether that means he's leaving at that hour or if something else is going to happen. Good evening, Your Excellency, and Mademoiselle. I trust everything has been to your satisfaction? Yes, thank you. If Your Excellency will permit me, your presence here with your lovely granddaughter is too great of an honor. I am not worthy to serve you. I thank you for your indulgence. I will bother you no further. Mademoiselle? Well, that genuflecting waiter called the old man in the corner His Excellency. He's with his granddaughter. They seem in high spirits. At the other occupied table are four men dressed in what I would call plain or staid clothing. And I'm actually waiting here for something to happen. 
Uh, because something important is going to happen. And we see Herr Schmidt checking his pocket watch. I don't know quite what he's waiting for. And we see that table disperse. Now, for this next part, I'm just going to fast forward a little bit in editing, which unfortunately you can't, there's no option in the game to pass time. Voilà, monsieur. Le canard roti. Oh, which is uh, annoying. Excuse there me, are actually some ways to quickly pass time in the game, but they're, uh, we haven't seen them yet, and they're, it, it's kind of a workaround. So we take a look at the schedule. We left Paris at about 7. We get to Munich, where Schmidt says the merchandise uh, will be in by 10.30 tomorrow morning. And we hit Vienna at 6 p.m. tomorrow, and then Belgrade the next morning. Now, each of those destinations is important. So, look here in our inventory, grab these matches out of the box, and we still have this empty box. Look at that scarf a little bit more closely. It's got a big W on it, which you couldn't see earlier, which is a hint. And someone just came into the room. Yes, it's the woman that we saw earlier. Ah, madame, welcome. Good evening. Madame's presence is a great honor for us. Your usual table is ready. If uh, madame will permit me. Thank you. If I may say so, madame is like a shining star and we are all basking in her light. I am your son. Thank you, Pascal. Enjoy your dinner, madame. Well, it appears she's a regular here. Oui, madame. Avez-vous fait votre choix? Yes. I'll have the beef filet. Le filet de bœuf jardinière. Very good. Is madame dining alone? Yes. Very good, madame. And like I said before, there are a few ways to pass time in the game, but they all involve exploiting something, such as doing the same task. So every time there's a like a cut scene, like a, a, an animation that takes place where we don't have control, uh, up, up to several minutes might pass during that scene. So it's really just finding a task that you can repeat over and over again. And it'll skip like, you know, three minutes each time you do it. So it's not really fast. And it's, it's pretty tedious when you're just trying to get to an important point in the story. And what I'm waiting for is for some way to introduce Kath to this woman that isn't as blunt as just walking up to her uh, we could actually just walk up to her and say hi, but she will not take kindly to that. So I'm actually waiting for Herr Schmidt to do something. Le figue de boeuf jardinière. Thank you. Will there be anything else, madame? No? Bon appétit. Excuse me, Fräulein Wolf, I could not leave the room without paying you my compliments. I'm sure you do not remember me. My name is August Schmidt. But I do remember you. It was at Mrs. Lauder's in London, wasn't it? Yes. You played Brahms' violin concerto. How lovely of you to remember. And you were with an English woman. Was she your wife? Um, uh, uh, yes, um, that is... Uh, ah, Miss Wolf. May I present my colleague from America, Mr. Tyler Whitney. Herr Whitney, Miss Anna Wolf. I, I'm sorry, I didn't catch the name. Tyler Whitney, have we met before? I seem to remember hearing of a Mr. Whitney years ago in New York. You were trying to raise money to start a revolution in Cuba, isn't that right? Mexico, and it wasn't me. It must have been someplace else that we met. Herr Whitney is well known as a champion of freedom and justice in countries other than his own. 
But please, don't let us interrupt your dinner. Not at all. You're both very kind. One does get so bored on these long journeys. Good evening. A beautiful woman. Is she? And a brilliant performer. To look at her, you would never think she was Jewish. Until Munich, sir. Let's see if we can ask Anna about this scarf. Excuse me, I think you dropped this. It's not mine. Isn't that your monogram? W. For Wolf. No. My mistake. Now that scene with Anna is interesting in a number of ways. One is that she seemed to know that Kath isn't really Tyler Whitney. Uh, She also seemed quite up, quite apprised of world revolutions for a concert violinist. Uh, Being aware that Tyler and Kath were in Cuba and Mexico apparently agitating for revolution there, Um, something that Kath denies, but we think might be true. She also hesitated about her name starting with a W, which is something you would think she would immediately realize. Um, And we might wonder whether that isn't really her name, but who are we to judge? Our name isn't Whitney either. And that's where we leave it today. We don't have any answers to our questions yet. We think that Tyler wanted to show us what was in the case, though he also had a deal to deliver gold to Schmidt, so maybe that's not right. Uh, We don't know how he died or what he was carrying with him, and we don't know who stole those items, though it seems like Francois uh, has one of them, and maybe Anna Wolfe was in his compartment at some point. So in the next episode, hopefully we can start to start to unravel this mystery.